let's take a look at some ecosystems. So first we will start with producers and consumers. Producers are organisms that make their own food. They're also known as autotrophs. They get energy from uh, chemicals or the sun, and with the help of water, they convert that energy into usable energy in the form of sugar or food. The most common example of a producer is a plant. And consumers, on the other hand, are organisms of an ecological food chain that receive energy by consuming other organisms. These organisms are formally referred to as heterotrophs, which include animals, some bacteria, and fungi. All right, so producers also will be called autotrophs, and we're usually thinking those are plants. Uh, consumers can be referred to as heterotrophs, and we're thinking those are animals as well as uh, bacteria and fungi. Okay, so let's take a look at the energy pyramid. So the energy pyramid will have uh, four levels to it. So an energy pyramid is a graphical model of energy flow in a community. The different uh, levels, which there are four levels, like I just said, represent different groups of organisms that might compose a food chain. From the bottom up, they are as follows. On the bottom, we have uh, the producers, who we just talked about. They bring energy from non-living non sources into the community. Second, from the bottom, we have primary consumers. They eat the producers, which makes them herbivores in most communities. Next, we have secondary consumers. They eat the primary consumer, consumers, which makes them carnivores. And finally, we have the ter 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 tertiary consumers, and they eat the secondary consumers. Okay, we gotta be familiar with biomes. So, a biome is a community of plants and animals that have common characteristics for the environment they exist in. They can be found over a range of continents. Biomes are distinct biological communities that have formed in response to a shared physical climate. I need to know biome is a broader term than habitat. Any biome can compose a variety of habitats. Biomes are very large ecological areas on the Earth's surface with fauna and flora, so that means animals and plants, adapting to their environment. Biomes are often de defined by ab abiotic factors such as climate, relief, geology, soils, or vegetation. A biome is not an ecosystem. Repeat that, you need to know that. A biome is not an ecosystem, although it can look like a massive ecosystem, but it actually is different. If you take a closer look, you'll notice the plants or animals in any of the biomes have special adaptations that make it possible for them to exist in that area. You may find many units of ecosystems within one biome. So there are five major categories of biomes on Earth, and we need to be familiar with each of these. In these five, there are many sub-biomes under which many more well-defined ecosystems. Okay, so let's take a look at each of these. Okay, so we start with the desert biome. So th they have hot and dry deserts, semi-arid deserts, coastal deserts, and cold deserts. With the aquatic biomes, they're basically grouped into two, which is freshwater biomes and marine biomes. So within freshwater biomes, you have lakes and ponds, rivers and streams, and wetlands. And within marine biomes, you have oceans, coral reefs, and estuaries. So something that you would be thinking about within the aquatic biome, like a question that you might see, um, could be uh, like, so say you took oceans, right? Is that located within the freshwater biome, the marine biome, and then they would give you two other types of biomes, right? So oceans are part of marine biomes. The forest biomes, there are are three main biomes that make up forest biomes. These are the tropical rainforest, temperate, and boreal forests. The boreal forests are also referred to as taiga, T-A-I-G-A. 
uh, and that's one you should be familiar with. Taiga means forest biome. That's what you need to know there. With the grassland biomes, two main types. Uh, there's the savanna grasslands and the temperate grasslands. And then finally we have the tundra biomes. There are two major tundra biomes, and that's the arctic tundra and the alpine tundra. Okay, so tundra, you need to know that is by far the coldest of the five biomes, and so from a weather standpoint, uh, tundra means cold. So biomes play a crucial role in sustaining life on Earth. For example, the aquatic biome is home to millions of fish species and the source of the water cycle. It also plays a very important role in climate formation. The terrestrial biomes provide food, enrich the air with oxygen, and absorb carbon dioxide and other bad gases from the air. They also help regulate climate. Okay, so that's biomes. Okay, and then we have photosynthesis. So the word photosynthesis can be separated into two smaller words, photo, which means light, and synthesis, which means putting together. Plants need food, but they do not have to wait on, plant, on people or animals to provide for them. Most plants are able to make their own food whenever they need it. This is done using light, and the process is called photosynthesis. Okay, so to make food, plants need three things, and we need to be familiar with these three things. They are carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. So let's take a look at how these are collected by plants. So we start with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide from the air passes through small pores, which are holes, in the leaves. These pores are called stomata. Water is absorbed by the roots and passes through vessels in the stem on its way to the leaves. Sunlight is then absorbed by a green chemical, which is chlorophyll, in the leaves. Photosynthesis takes place in the leaves of plants. The leaves are made up of very small cells. Inside these cells are tiny structures called chloroplasts. Each chloroplast contains a green chemical called chlorophyll, which gives leaves their green color. Chlorophyll absorbs the sun's energy. It is this energy that is used to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is released from the leaves into the atmosphere. Hydrogen and carbon dioxide are used to form glucose or food for plants. Some of the glucose is used to provide energy for the growth and development of plants, while the rest is stored in leaves, roots, or fruits for later use by plants. Photosynthesis is important because it provides food and oxygen. 